What's up guys, Chris from Review Cave here, and Dragon Ball Super Chapter 61 finally released. And I have to say, I'm okay with it. I liked it. There were problems near the end of it, and some stuff that was mentioned in dialogue that really shouldn't have been said, and some very weird decisions. But overall, not a bad chapter. I don't think it was worth a full month wait, but it was still a fun chapter, nonetheless. Primarily because it focuses on Vegeta, and we finally get the reveal of what his new technique is. So, allow me to go with this review. I'm not. This isn't going to be very long, even though it was a monthly manga with 45 pages. This won't be too long. Hopefully. If I don't, you know, ramble on. But anyway, so the chapter begins the same way as last time, where Vegeta ends up showing up and fights Moro. Leaning a couple of punches, but then it appears that he is knocked down and isn't doing much. And, you know, Gohan and the androids are basically, like, realizing that maybe Vegeta, despite being all talk, was was basically useless at that point. Which, it does kind of show the whole meme of how... Meme, at this point, where whenever a big bat shows up, Vegeta has to... Always, like, says how strong he is, and then he ends up getting his ass beat. And then Goku saves the day. This time... I did like the decision from the last few chapters where Goku fought Moro before Vegeta using Ultra Instinct Sign. Uh, even with Sign, since it's mostly a defensive ability, Goku can't land any real good hits on him. Even though he's been try doing his best to avoid uh, getting hit by his the energy absorption that Moro was known for. Which is nice to see Goku take an L, as it'd be the first one out of the main two to get an L. Vegeta showing up is something that everyone wanted to see. Vegeta deserves a win. So what happens? Well, as the fight continues, Vegeta slowly but surely starts to get the upper hand. He manages to make a few dodges and lands a few good, good blows. And it's stated that people are thinking that Vegeta might be getting stronger, but it is stated by Piccolo that Moro is actually getting weaker as the fight goes on. And if you pay attention as, the, as Vegeta keeps landing all of his hits, you actually see what's going on. And Goku notices this pretty much right off the bat. Every time Vegeta lands a hit, you see these little um, uh, energy, en en energy bubbles, energy spheres, leaving Moro's body. And it is revealed that this is the new technique that Vegeta learned back on Yardrat. Sp Let's see. Forced Spirit Fission. So that was a new technique. So apparently, this ability allows Vegeta to literally, like, take out energy that was absorbed or merged, and basically separate it from whatever being being it was. And it was even confirmed that this could undo freaking fusions. So, I do like that. Not to mention, Vegeta literally said, as he was doing this for like a brief moment, he literally looked towards Piccolo and said, if you want, I can give you an example and, and separate you from the ones that you fused with. So, essentially, this new ability makes energy absorption... If anyone has any, if you have any energy absorbing villains in the future, Vegeta can just straight up nullify it. And even if he fights a fusion, Vegeta can just completely erase the fusion, make it like it never happened. Which is honestly nice. It's not like some something like a big powerhouse attack or something. It's a more technical move that it's really nice to see because in Dragon Ball it's always been, oh, whoever punches harder, whoever makes another giant ass explosion this really does give vegeta a new reservoir of abilities because we know he's good at fighting we know he has some epic attacks but him but the, the best thing i like about this is that vegeta is controlling the fight every single hit he siphons he, he fissions off more energy that the moro absorbed from the planets and people that he basically killed and the best part is that he can basically with a flick of his wrist send it all back. This actually helps with the fact that he does in fact have good spirit control as well as good energy control, which would make it so that his Super Saiyan God form is, well, can be improved upon even more. Because remember, Super Saiyan God, you need very good and constant control of your of your energy. So, seeing as uh, Vegeta mastered this in, l in less than a year, this could help him maybe push forward with a new form of Super Saiyan God, or more closely perfect Super Saiyan Blue. I mean, this is just me being a fanboy and speculating, but, hey. So, Moro, every single hit Moro's been getting, he's been aging more and more, reverting back to his old self. 
and Vegeta was basically getting ready to end it all. He's like, I'm not, I'm not like Kakarot. I'm not, not just going to like let you live or give you a moment to breathe. I'm going to erase you right now. Hell, he even asked Jonko if he wants him dead or if he wants Moro captured dead or alive, being somewhat considerate about it. And Jackal did kind of confirm that the only reason they kept the guy alive was because there was no one alive at that point to kill him. Now, before I continue onward with this, I have to address the dialogue that was used in this episode, <laughs> chapter. Primarily, them talking about Vegeta. So, we all know, since the end of Z, the start of Super, Vegeta has pretty much solidified himself as a hero that wants to just save the Earth. He's not just looking for a good fight, he literally wants to save the Earth. Piccolo confirms this, but this is something that we've known since Dragon Ball Super ended. I mean, I mean come on. Vegeta's gone through a big character arc. Granted, I like that people in that the characters in universe are acknowledging this. It is a nice thing to say, but he did kind of say that the only real reason Vegeta changed this much was because of Goku. And don't get me wrong, him meeting Goku and losing to Goku did help. But I believe being around Boma, Gohan, hell, even Piccolo, being around all the Z fighters, kind of changed his personality and his outlook on life. Not to mention having kids. So, it makes sense. The guy changed over the years, and now he's a, a hero. Which I really do like. And he's dominating Moro. He's fighting for the betterment of mankind. And another thing I do like in this chapter is that, you know how Vegeta does not like fusions? It's not because of some kind of prideful thing where he just doesn't like how it looks, or stuff like that. He just says that it doesn't feel fair, because it's not your own personal strength. It's basically combining with someone else's in order to be stronger. So that kind of does make sense for Vegeta, since he is someone that's constantly training and getting stronger. So, yeah, makes complete sense, in my opinion, and it does kind of go back to all the times he's underestimated his opponents and letting them power up, which is, again, a meme. But now we know that this is Vegeta being like, I just want a fair fight. I want to take someone down at their strongest. I don't care if I'm too, if I'm dominating them. I want them to. I want to de defeat them at their strongest. So that's his idea of a fair fight. That's good. But what I don't like is well, was how they decided to kind of end the chapter in a way. I mean, it was nice. It was something that I was kind of expecting, but... Look, Vegeta dominating Moro happened for roughly half a chapter. It was half a chapter. So, you'd expect that with him getting the upper hand on Moro for a whole half of a chapter, something big would have to happen. Either Moro would do something insane, or Vegeta would just kill Moro and that would be the end of the arc. Which, we all know that... They're not going to have one single a chapter and a half, or in this case a full chapter, of Vegeta pretty much dominating the big bad of the arc. That's something we can't have. Not at all. So, one thing I one thing that happens is that Moral does state, which is something we all pretty much have forgotten at this point, since with all the action and fighting, was that Moral, despite losing all the, the, the energy that he had absorbed, he still had his magic. Now, with that, he ends up making like a big flash of light to get away and head towards the ship where the Spike guy and 7-3 are. And once he gets there, once he gets there, he kills the little guy and then devours 7-3. He doesn't merge with them. He doesn't fuse with them or absorb them. He just straight up eats. He just straight up eats them. And as Vegeta goes to follow him, after all that, Vegeta gets slammed down onto the ground, and we see Moro's new form. He and Moro says that, seven, that the reason he left 7-3 alive was because he didn't just copy his energy and powers. 7-3 was a full backup of himself. So essentially, we got the old Moro, uh, basically like a second copy of Moro, combined with the current Moro, which is weaker, but has all the magic and stuff like that. Yeah, that's kind of weird. And not to mention that desi his design is more humanoid, we're just like many horns, and I think a lot of people are say saying that he looks a lot more like Hit now. Eh, okay. But now we ha now the big question is how are we going to win now, because since I believe since he just straight up ate him, I don't think Moro would have done this if he knew that this would count as, as absorption or fusion. So, Vegeta's new technique, possibly, 
uh, obsolete now. But yeah, that's how the chapter ends. One thing I do want to state is that it has this that we do get this one small exposition dump about the Namekians. So when Vegeta like separated all the energy to go to have it go back to all the planets and people that Moro absorbed and killed, it is stated that people who have killed by Moro's hand, like literally, if Moro literally just killed them straight up, can't be brought back. But but if someone but they can be brought back if they were just absorbed, their life energy was just absorbed. Okay, yeah, that makes... Uh, no wall drawing, well, I guess that makes sense. But there's also one more thing that kind of... It's iffy. I mean, I'm not too hung up about it, but it's just something that I just want to say. Is that when the Dunmechians are brought back, the explanation for why their bodies and the planet didn't end up decaying was because, like, the Dragon Balls somehow kept everyone from decaying... And not just, you know, and stuff like that. I don't know. I mean, all the wishes from the Dragon Balls were used up, and I think the Grand Elder was killed. So wouldn't that make the Dragon Balls unusable? I mean, a plot hole. It's kind of a bit of a plot hole, but either way, it's not... I'm not too upset about it. At least Nunamic's back, so they got their backup Dragon Ball, so that's a good thing. But all of that said and done, not a bad chapter. I like how Vegeta was brought into a new light. Everyone literally coming to terms with the fact that he is a hero now. How he's basically gone through all this shit and now he's just a hero to protect the Earth and not just someone that just wants to fight stronger, stronger opponents like Goku. And the fact there's also one thing I want to say is that Vegeta, before trying to kill Moro, before Moro gets away and becomes this new form, he Moro literally s s says that. Vegeta, Asks if Vegeta thinks he's safe from hell, and Vegeta's basically accepted the fact that once he dies, he's going straight to hell. That he is bound to hell no matter what, no matter what he does. And that when he dies, he will in fact go to hell. So, yeah. That actually does help with Vegeta's character, because this helps solidify him as more of a selfless person. He knows that when he dies, he's going to hell no matter what he does. But he's still doing it. That shows how much he's grown, and I love that. But now with the way the chapter ended, it's possible Vegeta's just going back to being fodder, <laughs> or just completely useless at this point, especially with the new technique that he learned. So you know what I think's gonna happen? Possibly fusion. That could happen. <laughs> or they can use the Dragon Balls to help with this. I honestly I just don't see much of a way for them to get out of this unless Goku can access Master Ultra Instinct on his own again. Just as a cop out, or them fusing into Gogeta, using Vegeta's new ability, and maybe even going into Ultra Instinct Sign, that could help. Or them fusing and then going into Master Ultra Instinct, or how maybe even bringing Broly in just to decimate Moro. I honestly have no idea how they're gonna go about this, but I feel like one of the most possible. I feel like either Master Ultra Instinct or Gogeta. That's really that's really the only possible ways I see them handling the new Moro and how they're gonna end it. But all that's it and done. What did you guys think? Was this a good chapter? Did you enjoy what they did with Vegeta with this? What are your thoughts on how they decided to go about this chapter and how they basically made Vegeta's new ability and his training basically useless halfway through at the halfway point of the chapter? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll see you guys again with another Dragon Ball review next month.